Hello traders and welcome back. Steve Gans here and we're going to get into lesson four of our four-part series on Option Greeks and this one is on Vega. So let's get started and as I have with the other ones I am going to go quickly through the intrinsic versus extrinsic value of an option. This is an important thing to understand. If you've watched the other prior videos you can probably fast forward about five minutes. If you have not seen those I want to make sure that this is covered. The intrinsic value is the same as the moneyness of an option. You'll hear people talk about at the money, in the money, out of the money. So this this will help you understand that an out of the money option has no intrinsic value at all extrinsic value is the value of an option beyond its intrinsic value or its moneyness it's made up mainly of two key components of time value and volatility that's why it's important for our discussion today if I own a $100 long call on XYZ and XYZ is currently trading at 105 the intrinsic value of my long call is $5. The extrinsic value can vary at any time with time and volatility. So if we're at expiration, if we have this scenario where I own a $100 long call, the underlines trading at 105, at expiration I have $5 in intrinsic value. If we're not yet at expiration, if we're you know, a week prior, a day prior, a month prior, whatever, there's going to be some time value and volatility that is going to add extrinsic value into this trade. So we'll have the $5 of intrinsic value and then some amount of extrinsic value that will again vary with time and volatility. As far as moneyness of an option, an out-of-the-money option has market value less than their premium. This means that the option would not be profitable to exercise. For example, if I own a call option that has a strike price of $100, the current stock price is at $90, the option would be out of the money because it would not be profitable to exercise that option paying $100 a share for the stock and then only being able to sell it for $90 a share. However, if I flip that table, an in-the-money option has a market value greater than the premium. This means that the option would be profitable to exercise immediately. For example, if a call option has a strike price of 100 and the current stock price is at 110, the option would be in the money because it would be profitable to exercise this option buying the 100 shares of stock at $100, turn around and selling them for $110. At the money option, of course, if we're trading at $100 and we have a put or a call, whatever, at $100, that's just considered at the money. There is no intrinsic value built into that option. To further help explain this, I'll take the example of stock in XYZ. If XYZ stock is trading at $100, a 110 call is going to be out of the money. 100 put or call is going to be at the money. $110 put is in the money. So with that, let's delve a little bit into Vega. Now Vega is also kind of a, a word for volatility. Volatility is a measure of fear in our market. It, it basically is something that's built through mathematical formulas. How many people are essentially buying puts or ensuring their positions? And if the market gets into a downdraft or a meltdown mode, more and more people start buying that insurance. And the more people that buy that insurance, it impacts the mathematical equations to where volatility is showing higher and higher and higher the more people are paying uh, up for that insurance. So Vega is one of the Greeks, which are a set of measures that describe the behavior of options. Vega measures the sensitivity of an option's price to changes in implied volatility. Vega tells you how much the price of an option is expected to change for every 1% change in implied volatility. If a call option has a Vega of 0.2, this means the price of the option is expected to change by 20 cents for every 1% change in implied volatility. 
And just like we did previously, we're going to go into the lab using OptionStrat and take a look at what all this means in P&L diagrams. The price of an option increases as implied volatility increases. The price of an option decreases as implied volatility decreases. Now, how this impacts your P&L, of course, depends on whether you are long or short those options at the time that there is a shift in volatility. Vega is a dynamic measure. It changes as implied volatility changes. This is because the value of an option is affected by implied volatility of the underlying asset. Vega is a useful tool for traders because it can help them to manage their risk. If a trader's long a call option with a Vega of 0.20, this means that the trader's profit will increase by 20 cents for every 1% increase. And again, it helps a trader kind of understand how their position is going to be impacted in different volatility environments. So let's just come in to option strat here and take a look at our PL diagram. So I'm just going to use right now, I, I tend to like to trade butterflies. So again, I'm using a butterfly trade here. And what I specifically want people to note is if we look at our, our Greek here, there's Vega, our volatility number. We're currently right at that 11.8 in implied volatility. Now I want to point out all of these options have the same expiration date. That's really important and the reason it's important is because when you start to get into calendars and diagonals where some options will have a shorter term date, some options will have a longer term date, the Vega reading, the Vega measure, it's going to show as though the position is positive Vega. But that's not necessarily true, and I'm not going to fully launch into that explanation here. But I have done another video specifically on calendars and diagonals that kind of show a little bit about why that may or may not be true. So just assume that everything I'm talking about here, we are talking about a position where all the expirations happen at the same time. And what we can look at here, again, in a butterfly, we are long these outside wings and we are short these center wings. Okay, in the case of an iron butterfly here, I'm selling a call spread and I'm selling a put spread and I'm taking in a certain amount of premium on that trade. Now, if you'll remember from the, the bullet points that we just went through, when volatility increases, the value of options increase as well. Now, that's bad for this particular position because I am short these options, okay? And I had negative vega. So that means that if volatility goes up, this is going to negatively impact my position. Now, if I'm still centered under the tent, I'm not overly worried about that if I still like my position. But what I'm really looking to do in most positions where I'm selling premium, where I am you know, putting on an iron condor or an iron butterfly, is in the ideal world, I would put those on and then volatility would drop. Volatility dropping means the value of these that I sold, these short options, is decreasing so I can buy them back for less money. That's, that's a good thing. Now these are also decreasing, but because I put my butterfly on <clears throat> and these were at the money, these are the ones that were going to have the most extrinsic value in them, and they're the ones that are going to decay the most. So that's why in the ideal world, when I put on a condor or a butterfly or most any trade you can think of where you are selling premium, the ideal situation for those is in fact for volatility to drop out. So I often try to wait when I'm putting on a delta neutral trade. I like to try to put those on in a scenario where volatility might be a little higher at the time I put them on and that I might get a little bit shrinking of that volatility rather quickly coming into the trade. That's why many times people look at these trades to put them on before an earnings announcement or 
before a Fed announcement. I'm a little leery of that personally, particularly with earnings announcements, because you can get massive moves that can easily outrun both sides of these. But the one thing I do know about those trades is the vast majority of the time, volatility is going to drop right after whatever announcement it is you're waiting on, whether it's a Fed announcement, earnings announcement, et cetera. And again, if I put on a trade like this and volatility drops, that is good for my trade, so long as my underlying kind of stays under control. But again, as we know, in earnings reports, I mean, something can gap up 10, 15 points, drop, you know, 10, 15 percent, I should say. So that's why I'm a little leery of it in some of those environments. But the core premise is you ideally, if you are short volatility, you're going to want that you're going to want the volatility to go down and that will bring value into this trade. Now, let's just look at a reverse situation here. Let me clear this out and uh, load up a long call, for example. So I just have the long call now. And here we can see that I have a lot of Vega. And we can see what happens to that when volatility goes up. So again, if I am long an option, if I paid a debit for a spread or a debit for an option, I'm going to be positive Vega. And if I sold a spread, I'm usually going to be short Vega. If I bought something, I'm usually going to want volatility to go up to help my profitability. If I was a net seller on something and I'm looking for that decay to happen, it's going to be more beneficial if, in fact, volatility decreases, as you saw in my butterfly example a moment ago. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of Vega, and that's going to wrap up this four-part series on the Greeks. There's a lot more that could be gone into. This is a high-level look at how those impact various positions. And hopefully you found that helpful. If you did, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and give me any comments. Take care.